वेलकम टू टूडेज क्लास आई एम शक्ति शेखर दास एंड आई विल बी कंटिन्यूइंग विथ माई डिस्कशन ऑन एवजेनी एवतुशेंकोस स्टैंडिंग अप फॉर योर सेल्फ इन माई प्रीवियस क्लास आई हैड डिस्कस्ड अबाउट एवतुशेंको द नरेटर्स चाइल्डहुड एक्सपीरियंस द ट्रायल्स एंड ट्रिब्यूलेशंस ही हैड फेस्ड वाइल ग्रोइंग अप इन द स्ट्रीट्स ऑफ मॉस्को सो as i said in my previous class his childhood was not the happiest of childhoods he had to face a lot of difficulty he had to face a lot of hardship and he had to face the problem of bullying because of which most of his childhood was marred and scarred by unpleasant experiences so he picked up various habits he picked up various things from his education which had been left to the streets so he learned the good the bad and the ugly he learned to spit he learned to smoke he learned to curse and he also learned to overcome his fear he learned to be ready for the fight whenever the opportunity or the occasion presented itself before him and now he has to face the biggest challenge of his life and that is he has to overcome his fear of a particular guy named red who is red red is the bully who harasses and troubles other people other boys who lived in the street and now like the others even the narrator is also afraid of red he is big he is strong and he is armed with a knuckle duster he extorts money from others because of all these reasons everyone is fearful of red and now the time has come for the narrator to overcome his fear let's find out how the narrator overcomes his fear of the bully so the first thing that he does is to write a poem about red so why does he write the poem because he wants to take the threat of red in a less serious manner he wants to give it a comical twist so he writes a satirical poem what is a satirical poem it is a poem that parodies or mocks the other person that is a satirical poem as a result of this uh, the narrator sort of gives red a comical portrait he portrays red in a comical light that is the defiant the harsh bully is nothing but a comical person and through that poem he manages to portray the threat as in a lighter vein so i wanted to conquer my fear of red so i wrote a poem about him this was my first piece of journalism in verse by the next day the whole street knew it by heart and exulted with triumphant heartred that is this was his first attempt at writing a piece of poetry and it was in fact as he says that it was my first attempt at journalism that is his first attempt at writing so by writing the poem he mocks or satirizes red and not only does he manage to portray red in a comical light but also gives courage to the other people who lived in the street they had also been the victims of red so as a result of that they also took heart from the fact that someone is able to stand up to red it is a way to overcome the fear he writes down about the person in a mocking tone he mocks the person whom he fears the most and in doing so he tries to overcome his fear of red and the other people the other boys who are fearful of red were afraid of him they also 
read the poem, they also listen to the poem, and they also take heart from the fact. They are also inspired that by the poem that here is a guy, why should we fear him? And they all learned the poem with heart, by their heart, and they began to hate Red even more. That he is a bully. And why do we have to fear him? He isn't the best person out there. So there is no reason to fear. But it is easier said than done. And we shall find out how the narrator faces the consequences of writing the poem. One morning on my way to school, I suddenly came upon Red and his lieutenants. His eyes seemed to bore through me. Ah, the poet, he drawled, smiling crookedly. So you write verses? Do they rhyme? Soon, Red finally comes to know that the narrator has been writing poems about him. Ah, one day in the morning, the narrator was on his way and he is stopped by Red and his listeners. Ah, the poet, he addresses him. Like the narrator had mocked him through the poem, Red also mocks the narrator by calling him, by addressing him as the poet. And not only that, but also he mocks the poet's poetic abilities. So you write verses and do the verses rhyme. So he talks to the narrator in a mocking way, in a mocking manner. Why does he do that? Because the narrator had mocked Red through his poetry, through the poem that he wrote about him. So Red also spares no opportunity to mock the narrator. But does he stop at mocking the narrator? Is it the only thing that he does? No. Instead, he takes out the knuckle duster and strikes the narrator on the head. He gives him a punch on the head and that cuts open his forehead. Red's hand darted into his pocket and came out armed with its knuckle duster. It flashed like lightning and struck my head. I fell down streaming with blood and lost consciousness. So, the, so Red hit the narrator on the head and it was lights out for him. He was knocked out cold, unconscious, and he was bleeding from the cut in his head. This was my first remuneration as a poet. Look at the cynical tone of the narrator. He says that this was my first reward as a poet. Throughout their lives, poets earn lots of rewards, lots of accolades. And the narrator, he had written a poem for the first time. And this was the reward he received. It wasn't a medal or a trophy. Rather, it was a sound thrashing, a beating at the hands of a bully that left him bleeding and unconscious. I spent several days in bed. It's normal. He had sustained such grievous injuries. His head had been busted open with a metal knuckle duster. And with such grievous injuries, it will definitely take some time to recover. And he lies in bed for several days to re recover from his injuries. When I went out with my head still bandaged, I again saw red. Finally, he goes out, but he wasn't okay. His head was still in the bandage. He wasn't 100% all right, but still he decides to go out. And 
when he goes out he sees his biggest fear is bully the red and what happens when he sees the guy who had thrashed him the narrator takes to his heels he had written the poem in order to overcome his fear of red but the opposite has happened instead he got beaten by red and he fears him even more than before i struggled with myself but lost and took to my heels despite trying his best to overcome his fear he struggled against his fear but lost and as a result he has to flee he fled he could no longer face red because he was afraid and once he came back home he feels ashamed of himself like what have i done how have i messed up things how could i be so fearful of red all these things started playing around in his mind at home i rolled on my bed biting my pillow and pounding it in shame and impotent fury at my cowardice he felt that i am nothing but a coward i couldn't face my fear i got scared of red what can i do he feels helpless and in his helplessness he bites his pillow and punches it he is angry not only with red but also with himself that is i have let myself down i have learned that i have to overcome my fear but still i am afraid of red why is that so he searches for the answers but the answers elude him he tries to find a way out to overcome his fear and the first attempt he made to overcome his fear of red has ended in disastrous failure he wrote a poem satirizing the bully and instead what did he receive his first reward was a sound thrashing a broke a busted head and several days in bed that was his reward for trying to overcome his fear and now the question remains will he give up or will he continue trying to overcome his fear of red let's find out i made up my mind to vanquish it at whatever cost so he decides whatever may happen i will not give up i will overcome my fear at any cost and the determination of the narrator speaks for itself he is not going to give up he may have been beaten once but he won't back down he will continue trying to overcome his fear he will try various means to overcome the fear of red and he does so he tries his best he does his level best to overcome his fear and will he succeed the question remains but one thing is important the end does not matter but one shouldn't give up trying one is never sure what will happen in the end but because the result is so uncertain one shouldn't give up trying one should continue to keep trying keep pushing oneself to the limit and then only can a person succeed and the narrator also does the same he pushes himself to the limit and at the limit's edge he finds success so what exactly made red so much of a threat it was because he was physically 
imposing he was physically intimidating he was big and strong because of which he could easily thrash anybody so that was the only advantage he had over weaker and smaller boys so the narrator decides that by writing by mocking him through my literary works i cannot overcome him i have to overcome him physically and how will he overcome red physically by becoming stronger so he goes into training i went into training with parallel bars and weights so he decides to train himself to train his body to become stronger and he starts training with parallel bars it is a form of gymnastics where two bars are placed parallelly and a person will support his arms and raise himself to strengthen his body the torso and weights he starts lifting weights to strengthen his muscles after every session i would feel my muscles they were getting bigger but slowly see it is a long drawn process becoming physically stronger is a long drawn process and the same thing happens with the narrator every day he practices and trains hard but it takes a lot of time and every day after the training he would check his muscles have i become stronger have my muscles grown bigger and slowly and gradually he starts to feel the change the difference in his body his muscles were developing and he was no longer the small skinny boy who had been beaten up by red he was slowly becoming stronger he was stro- slowly becoming muscular who could take up the challenge or threat posed by red then i remembered something i had read in a book about a miraculous japanese method of wrestling which gave an advantage to the weak over the strong i exchanged a week's ration card for a textbook on jiu jitsu he remembered about a thing he had read in a book it was about jiu jitsu now in japan there are different forms of martial arts like jiu jitsu judo karate baritsu and different others all those martial arts are aimed at defending oneself from stronger opponents when a person is weak and is up against a stronger opponent he needs to defend himself and those martial arts offer the ways the techniques by which a person could overcome a bigger and stronger opponent and what does the narrator do he exchanges a week's ration card since he was living in poverty he was getting those ration cards to survive to sustain himself governments used to provide those ration cards using which they could buy the daily commodity so he chooses to forgo his weekly ration and instead buys a book on martial arts on jiu jitsu by which he could defend himself from red and his attacks for 3 weeks i stayed at home practicing with two other boys so for 3 weeks he practiced and practiced hard and he wasn't alone he got two other boys to join him they had also been the victims of red and his bullying so everyone wanted to overcome their fear everyone wanted to defeat red everyone wanted to overcome the threat that had been posed by red as a result of which two other boys gladly joined the narrator in his martial arts practice so 
they started training jointly and as they trained they became better practice makes a man perfect as the adage goes and the same thing happened with the narrator and his friends the harder they trained the better they became and after 3 weeks the narrator decides to confront red and it was to be the final confrontation between him and his biggest fear for 3 weeks i stayed at home practicing with two other boys then i went out red was sitting on the lawn in our yard playing vinet on with his lifners he was absorbed in the game red was sitting in the lawn and he was playing cards with his lifners fear was still deep in me urging me to go back at the sight of red his fear came back to haunt him he didn't know how on uh, on the earth i am i going to overcome my fear how will i face him will i be able to face him he is haunted by self doubt despite all the practice despite all the training he has self doubt he is not confident enough that he will be able to overcome the threat of red what if something happens what if he gets beaten up again all those things scare him and all those things are rooted in his fear of red as a result he wants to turn back he wants to flee once again but does he flee no he doesn't rather he faces his fear so he goes up to red and kick away the cards scattering them that is red was sitting and playing his, with his friends his the game of cards so the narrator walks up to red and kicks away the cards immediately red looks up and he looks at him as if he is surprised and amazed at the guts of the narrator after the beating that i gave you you still have the guts to come here and confront me to face me he wonders he looks at the narrator in a threatening manner but he doesn't back down the narrator isn't scared anymore he has faced his fear and he has determined to overcome it at any cost red looked up surprised at my impudence after my recent flight the narrator has been left with two options fight or flight either he has to fight red or he has to take to his hills on the previous time he had taken to his hills while his head was still bandaged while he was recovering from his injury and now he has to fight he has to fight to overcome his fear he has to fight to free the street from the fear of the bully and he has to fight to regain his honor he got up slowly red was sitting in the lawn and he got up slowly you looking for more you looking for some more beating you want to get beaten once more he asked menacingly he tries to threaten the narrator he wants to threaten him with physical injury okay so you want to get beaten up once more once wasn't enough for you and now you have come here once again to get thrashed so he tries to put his hand into his pocket 
to take out the knuckle duster, his weapon of choice. As before, his hand dived into his pocket for the knuckle duster. But I made a quick jabbing movement, and Red, howling with pain, rolled on the ground. Before Red could take out the knuckle duster, what does the narrator do? He makes a quick jabbing movement. He jabs and punches Red, and Red hasn't learned martial arts to defend himself. On the other hand, that opens him up to any kind of attack from the narrator. That is the trick that he has learned through rigorous training by training with Jujitsu, and he immediately punches Red, and Red feels the pain, and he howls. He screams in pain. He didn't expect the narrator to attack. He didn't expect him to fight back after the beating that he had received. Bewildered, he got up and came at me, swinging his head furiously from side to side, like a maddened bull. But now he gets mad. Red becomes mad with anger and rage. You dare to strike at me? I am gonna finish you. And he comes at the narrator like a maddened bull. But the narrator isn't afraid anymore. He grabs hold of Red's wrist and squeezed it slowly. I caught his wrist and squeezed slowly, as I had read in the book, until the knuckle duster. Dropped from his limp fingers, he grabbed hold of his wrist and slowly squeezed his wrist. And by creating that pressure on Red's wrist, the knuckle duster falls from his fingers, and he is now defenseless. He has been deprived of his weapon, and now the narrator. Can hurt him. He realizes his own defenseless position. He is no longer a threat to the narrator. Nursing his hand, Red fell down again. He was sobbing and smearing the tears over his pockmarked face with his grubby fist. After that, he fell down on the ground. And he was crying. Look at the surprise, the element of surprise. The bully is now shedding tears. He had once taken delight in causing pain, in hurting others, in watching others in tears, and now he himself is sobbing. He is crying with humiliation and pain. The narrator has hurt him real bad, and more than that. He has destroyed his pride, his ego, and arrogance, and he was trying to wipe away his tears with a grubby fist. That day, Red ceased to be the monarch of our street. From that day onwards, Red was no longer the ruler of our street. Finally. The king has been conquered. Not only has the narrator managed to overcome his own fear, but also he has freed the whole street from the fear of Red. Red had posed a reign of terror. He had imposed a reign of terror on the entire street, and now, by Overcoming him by defeating him in a physical confrontation, the narrator finally frees the entire street from Red's terror. Now, after the defeat at the hands of the narrator, no one is afraid of Red anymore. So, 
he is no longer the ruler of the street who can stop anybody and ask for money. What I also, and from that day on, I knew for certain that one need not fear the strong. Well, not only did he overcome his own fear, but also he learned an important lesson. That is, one need not fear the strong. Red was certainly physically stronger. He was physically imposing and intimidating, who could attack anybody. But the narrator learned that one need not fear him. One could easily overcome a strong opponent, a strong rival, by proper training. All one needs is to know the way to beat them. For every strong man, there is a special jiu-jitsu. That is, for every strong man, there is a special jiu-jitsu. Everyone has weaknesses and jiu-jitsu will help them. So, by physical training, by undergoing practice, one can overcome stronger opponents. What I also learned on this occasion was that to be a poet, I had not only to write poems, but know how to stand up for them. The first time the narrator wrote a piece of poem poetry, he got badly beaten up. He could neither defend himself nor his poetry. In fact, Red mocked his poetic skills, addressing him as, ah, the poet. So you write verses, he mocked him and his poetry. The narrator could not stand up for his poetry. He could not stand up for himself. But in the final encounter, in the final confrontation with Red, not only does the narrator overcome his fear of Red, but also he stands up for himself. He stands up for his poetry. So that is the thing that he has learned from his encounter with Red. Now, let's uh, discuss a few questions which you might expect, which are important and you might expect in your examinations. So, the first question is, what kind of a childhood did the narrator have? So, as I discussed in my previous class, the narrator did not have a happy childhood. From a very young age, he had to live alone, all by himself. Why? Because his parents were divorced. He shared a strained relationship with his family. In fact, he had no family to speak of. His father was in Kazakhstan with his new wife and two children. His mother went to the front, to the place where the soldiers were staying, and she used to perform as a singer for them at concerts. So, his childhood was full of bitter memories, bitter experiences, and hardship. So, the narrator did not have a happy childhood. He had to face a lot of difficulty. He had to face bullying. He had to face hardships, and he had to struggle to even survive for a day. So these do not add up to happy experiences. And all these experiences also made him stronger and more resolved to overcome the odds of life. Let's uh, move to the next question. What did the narrator learn from the streets? What did the narrator learn from the streets? The narrator did not have a formal education. He was staying alone in a flat in the streets of Moscow. He was living all by himself. So his education was left to the streets. Everything that he picked up, all the habits, that he picked up was from the street. And 
His education was a mixture of the good, the bad, and the ugly. From a very young age, he learned to curse, to abuse others, to swear, and to spit. He had no hesitation in spitting at others. And he used to smoke. Even as a kid, he used to smoke. So, it was an ugly childhood, lawless, without any regard for morals. And all those adds up to the ugliness of his early days. But, all, but he also learned several important things from the street. He learned to stand up for himself. He learned to keep his fists ready for a fight. He learned to never back down from a challenge. And he also learned to never be afraid of anything or anyone. So, we can say that his uh, education or the things that he learned from the street was a mix of the good and the bad. While you can outline the bad habits that he picked up from the street, it was counterbalanced by the good things that he learned as well from the same street. And most importantly, now that we have come to the conclusion of this uh, prose piece, we have seen how he overcomes his biggest fear, the fear of the bully. And he picked up the, and the habits that he picked up from the streets, to never fear anything or anyone, to be always ready for a fight. All those habits, all those things stand him in good stead to overcome his opponent, to overcome his fear. So let's move to the next question. Who was red and why was everyone afraid of him? Who was red and why was everyone afraid of him? Well, from the since uh, the previous class we have been discussing about red, the bully, the big and broad-shouldered bully who used to trouble and harass everyone. Coming to his appearance, he had an imposing appearance with red hair and pockmarked face, tall, big-shouldered, bigger than his age of which was only 16, and he walked down the street with a swaggering gait, with a rolling gait, like he owned the street. He was the ruler of the street, and others were his subjects, whom he could order about, whom he could harass, whom he could do whatever he wished. And he wore his cap backwards, which showed his disregard for rules, which showed his disregard for social conventions. And he was always accompanied by two or three lieutenants, his followers, his uh, disciples, we can say. Like the king is followed by his courtiers, this red was also followed by boys who wanted to enjoy the spoils that he, the money that he extorted from others. Red used to snatch away money from others. And these lieutenants also shared with the money. So they had this lavish lifestyle, enjoying the, the, with the money of others. They had no regard for others. They had no hesitation in injuring somebody, in beating up somebody. So they had a lawless and notorious childhood. Their days of youth were filled with violence, hatred, and scorn for everything and everyone. And the same is reflected in the eyes of red when the narrator remarks that he had green eyes like a cat's 
and in those eyes was reflected scorn and hatred for everything and everyone and this can be ascribed to the upbringing the children during that age they had a very very poor upbringing they did not have any formal education there was no one to teach them about morals and ethics as a result of which they took to those lawless ways they did as they pleased they had those fights and brawls snatching and uh, every kind of lawless disorder and red is a fine example of the lawlessness that was present among the children of that age he is only 16 but look at his activities he is armed with a knuckle duster he is beating up people he is snatching away money so all those things can characterize him as a criminal and he does not dif- distinguish or differentiate between the good and the bad because he has no formal education he has no morals which can tell him that this is good and this is bad he does as he pleases so as a result of this he becomes a bully who takes a sadistic pleasure in hurting others in causing pain and injury to others well let's uh, move on to the next question why did the narrator write a poem well why did the narrator write a poem first of all like the other young boys the narrator was also afraid of red but he had learned from the streets that he needed to overcome his fear he tried his best to overcome his fear and he tried to do so by writing a poem about the thing that he feared the most he feared red so by writing a poem about red he tried to overcome his fear he wrote the poem portraying red in a comic light put he wrote the poem mocking red and by mocking the thing that he feared the most he tried to overcome his fear but things don't work out as he had expected them to instead he gets rewarded with a vicious beating with a sound thrashing by red next question what was the remuneration for his first poem what was the reward that the narrator received for his first poem well as we discussed today the narrator received a sound beating at the hands of red for his poem he wrote the first poem satirizing red and when red came to know about the poem he goes up to the narrator and beats him up he stops him mocks him and his poetic skills he stops him on the way and addresses him as ah the poet he mocks him so you write verses do the rhyme he scorns the narrator's poetic abilities the poetic skills and finally he beats him up he hits him with the knuckle duster on the head which leaves him bleeding and unconscious on the street in fact he has to remain confined to the bed for several days recuperating from his injuries moving on to the next question how did the narrator train to overcome his fear of red there was a deep sense of determination present in the narrator he desperately wanted to overcome his fear of red and this determination made him train hard to overcome his fear he trained with parallel bars he trained with weights and he learned jiu jitsu 
not only that but he went to great lengths to practice hard to overcome his weaknesses he was physically weaker than red but he trained with jiu jitsu he trained with martial arts to overcome his fear to overcome the disadvantage that he had with red red was physically bigger red was stronger and he was armed with the knuckle duster with which he could really hurt people so all those disadvantages are stacked up against the narrator so he develops himself physically he has to become stronger physically through rigorous training through rigorous exercises he becomes physically stronger he does gymnastics he picks up weights and he learns martial arts and in the long run all those things all those training will help him in his fight against red how did the narrator defeat the bully during the fight well describe the fight the fight sequence that unfolds between the narrator and red first of all the narrator is a bit hesitant there is still some fear lingering in his mind he is still afraid of red because he cannot forget the beating that he had got so he goes up to red and scatters away his cards the cards that red was playing with and when red gets up and threatens him menacingly you want some more beating the narrator immediately punches red with a quick jabbing motion he jabs him as red was about to take out the knuckle duster and this hurts red really bad and he howls and screams with pain and anger and next when he tries to hit the narrator with the knuckle duster the narrator grabs hold of his wrist and squeezes the wrist so that the knuckle duster drops down he is rendered defenseless he is deprived of his weapon and it hurts red so bad that he falls down on the ground howling with pain and sobbing he sheds tears from the from the fear from the pain that he suffers at the hands of the narrator he had not expected the narrator to come up with such resistance to come up with such a fight and as a result of which he is broken he is shocked and he is now the one who is afraid he fears for his own self now let's uh, come to the final question does the narrator succeed in standing up for himself the title of this prose piece is standing up for yourself and the question is does the narrator succeed in standing up for himself well the answer is certainly yes the narrator does succeed in standing up for himself but it has not been a smooth journey he has to fight hard he has to struggle to stand up for himself he has to struggle hard to overcome his fear and there is no one beside him who can support him in his struggle so through his own hard work through his own determination and through his own perseverance the narrator manages and succeeds to stand up for himself to overcome his biggest fear to overcome his adversary and the adverse situations so with that we come to the end of this uh, prose piece standing up for yourself so this is a poem this is a prose piece about being determined to succeed to overcome the odds to overcome the challenges presented by life 
life throws up challenges as well as opportunities and we should be prepared and ready for both and this throws piece is a fine example of the determination that is required to overcome the hardships of life that's all and thank you